Making sense of difference from control. Difference from control testing is a discrimination testing method where assessors are presented with an identified control sample followed by one or more test samples and are asked to scale the difference of the test samples from the control sample. The scale is anchored at no difference at all to very different. Difference from control, or DFC, is a very popular method for quality control programs where manufacturers need to test products directly off the line to ensure that their batches are meeting their standards. The method is a quick, simple task that is easily repeatable, making it a great option for a variety of products. However, establishing an effective quality control program using difference from control requires a framework to ensure best practice and ultimately the best results. The following are the six steps that CompuSense recommends in developing a successful quality control program using DFC. Understand your product and determine your standards. You must first identify your control. Determining your ideal product should be based on your company's experienced quality team, as well as historical data, and multiple batches should be used to understand the normal acceptable range for consumers. Next, you need to identify the products that are completely unacceptable and would be rejected by consumers as determined by your quality team and historical data. Finally, you'll want to identify the faults that have led to the product being rejected. This could be found in any modality, appearance, flavor, odor, texture, or aftertaste. The use of a check all that apply question is useful here to help identify the fault that also includes an other. This will allow for new attributes to be noted. Recruit, screen, and train a preliminary DFC panel. Developing an effective panel is an essential step in creating your quality control program. First and foremost, potential panelists must be screened to determine if they are discriminators. To do this, use a difference test that includes both acceptable samples and intentionally spiked samples with a common fault for that product. After ensuring that panelists are able to discriminate, you can then introduce the control product that will be used to calibrate your panel. Next, introduce the rejected samples that contain various faults and have panelists attempt to identify the faults in the rejected samples using a CATA question. You can then discuss what the fault attributes are in the rejected samples with your panelists. It's important that panelists become familiar and are ultimately able to identify various potential faults in your product. Introduce difference testing. Next, have your panelists become familiar with the task of difference testing. We recommend starting with products that have a large difference and progressively challenging panelists by reducing the size of the difference. The use of a blind control in this phase will also measure the placebo effect, as well as panelists' willingness to declare that there is no difference. Finally, screen out the panelists who have a less than 65% success rate in both the blind control and accepting or rejecting appropriate pairs. Training and retraining panelists on the various faults may be needed during this phase. Introduce the difference from control method. Now it's time to introduce the difference from control method. Begin by using only three categories on the scale that move from an acceptable to rejected model where the middle category represents a sample where a difference is perceived but still falls within the accepted range of difference for that product. Then, provide feedback to your panelists on their performance using the scale. CompuSense FCM is an ideal tool for providing immediate feedback, allowing them to retaste as necessary. Providing immediate feedback has been shown time and time again to reduce training time and train panelists more effectively. Once panelists become comfortable with using the category scales, begin increasing the number of category boxes on the scale. By doing this, panelists will learn to distinguish smaller differences. Ultimately, panelists will work up to a category scale of 10 boxes ranging from not at all different to extremely different. The top four boxes should be accepted, the middle boxes should be subject to management decision, and the bottom four boxes should definitely be rejected. Any of the middle or rejected products would require diagnostic CATA questions to provide corrective guidelines for production. Analyze the DFC data. The frequency of responses gives you a clear idea of how the samples were scored. This also provides insight to find the sweet spot or the cutoff point on the scale based on the distribution. If further analysis is required, 
An ANOVA or T-test can highlight a potential significant difference between the sample and the control. If unacceptable differences are found, analysis of the CATA responses will provide insight into the cause of the fault. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions about difference from control, please contact us at cloud at See you again next time.